Hello, Harv here, Video Audio Stuff. Today, I just wanted to discuss a theory that has kind of been accepted um, as a kind of rule of thumb, if you like. And that's the theory that with the Sony Alpha cameras, anything, any of them with uh, that have a log mode, S-Log2, 3, that kind of thing, you should expose to the right to eliminate any kind of noise, any, any noisy footage. A lot of people find that when they first, you know, first use uh, one of the Sony Alpha cameras with a log mode, um, they complain that the footage they get from their cameras uh, is noisy, and they think that usually because they haven't had uh, much experience with log modes and that kind of thing. So I've heard a lot of YouTubers and reviewers say that the solution to the to the noisy uh, shadows problem is to expose to the right and what they mean by that is make sure that your your footage your exposure is on the right hand side of your histogram and for people who are not familiar with a histogram it it's probably a good idea to to maybe pause and have a look at, at what they are but in a nutshell uh, it's it's a graph and it's basically a visual it's a kind of a way of showing where your exposure is and on the right hand side you've got very very bright and then towards the left hand side you've got very very dark um, and it's usually it shows you exactly where your exposure is and essentially the theory is if the footage is overexposed they can then bring the exposure down in post and bring the contrast up and that should cancel out the noise but I don't know. I mean, I thought it was worth investigating because I've, you know, I, I think it, these things are worth challenging, and um, so yeah, I thought I thought it was worth doing. And I've never actually seen any testing done on this, so so why not? Eh? Just a little tip for shooting in S Log Two and S Log Three with the Sony Alpha bodies. Whatever you do, for God's sake switch over to one of the more contrasty high saturation uh, picture profiles like a, a good one to use is Pic picture profile 2 which is the kind of generic photography uh, jpeg -y kind of mode to set your white balance because if you try and do it in s-log3 or s-log2 um, it's very difficult if not really quite impossible so I know this is the kind of video that attracts uh, YouTube trolls um, because, I mean, there are a lot of people that, that don't like kind of the established rules to be challenged. So to those people I'd say let's discuss it in the comments below because this video is as much for me as it is for you um, and, you know, I'd, let's, let's get a discussion going because you know, I'm interested to know what, how you guys do it and um, let's do it, it'll be fun. Before we get into the testing, um, I just wanted to say that uh, if you've not watched one of my videos before, um, I do these just for fun, I do it because I enjoy it and it's useful for me, it's useful for you, uh, I just do it in my spare time so I mean I'd really really appreciate it if uh, you could just take a second to hit the subscribe button that would be amazing and I really appreciate every single one so um, thanks let's do it so when people say you should expose to the right my question is how because for example let's say that you're in a, a, um, a shooting condition which is less than perfect so it's a low light situation You've got your swankiest lens on with a, like a nice wide aperture, and you obviously can't sh touch your shutter speed. It's either going to be at usually 50th or 60th of a second. Assuming that you also can't increase the amount of light into your shot, are you meant to increase your ISO? Is that is that what they're saying? Because surely that's just idiotic and obvious, isn't it? that's not exposed to the right, that's let more light hit your sensor. Surely that should be the rule. Just another quick tip for filming in log modes in Sony Alpha cameras. I wouldn't 100% trust the exposure meter that you'll see on 
the sort of bottom of your screen um, because it, it's fine in other shooting modes, but in the SLog2 and SLog3 modes, you know, because of their nature, they're very low contrast images. You tend to get on your histogram, you tend to get kind of the footage. It's all bunched up in the middle somewhere, and what you get is um, the exposure meter. Actually, it tells you that often you're, you know, two stops overexposed or one stop. Or to be honest, ignore it. I would when you're in S log two or S log three because it lies. Basically, you know, you use your brain, use your eyes and your brain. Um, and you'll be better because you're smarter than a camera. So, a few times I've actually I've exposed to the right, and I've actually had very mixed results. Um, a few times, well, most times it, it works out really well, and I get lovely footage and um, you know easily gradable footage. But a few times, and I'm not sure why this is, it, the footage I've got it back, and it's you know it's clean enough, but it's you know it's it's harder to grade and. To be honest, that could be quite a um, quite a, a big deal for me, anyway. Guys, let me know if if you've had a similar experience, you know. And actually, particularly with S Log Two, for some reason, S Log Two seems to have a, a really odd tint to it. Sometimes, it's kind of like a yellowy tint, and it makes things like skin tones quite difficult to um, to get right. So yeah, and I know it's easy to correct, but these things they do add up when it comes to grading, and um, they make things more difficult, basically. And I'm a lazy. Yeah. So after all my mixed results, I thought, yeah, we've we've got to test this. So all I did, I set up the camera in this room. I shut the blind. So all the, you know, any light that you're seeing is just you know, just the tiny bit that's leaking through the sides of the blind. Um, and it was it was a fairly kind of bright day outside, but you can get a pretty good idea of, uh, of the kind of conditions that I was shooting in. Um, just, just to really kind of challenge the camera and its sensor. So, let's check it out. This is the first example, and we're at ISO 1600 f5.6 and you can see we're very much exposed to the left. This is near enough what it looks like in the room, by the way, um, in terms of light coming in, and it's noisy. So now let's switch to exposing in the middle, and we're gonna go up to 20,000 ISO. And I think it looks a little cleaner, actually. For those of you who are interested, I'm actually using my Canon 24-70 f4LIS, and I did a separate video about that lens if you're interested. I'll pop the link in the description below. Now stepping up to 80,000 ISO and exposing to the right. Remember we're in S-Log3, so things do look, they will look a bit washed out. We can expect the histogram to look very much more spread out once it's been graded. So back with our first example, and now I'm going to apply a very basic grade to the footage. Bam! Still looks pretty shit, doesn't it? And let's go to our next example. So this is at 20,000 ISO. And it looks cleaner, I think. And But let's apply the grade. Bam! All I'm using is Emma Lutz for this one. I've just applied a basic James Miller LUT to this, so I haven't touched the saturation. And then finally, our 80,000 ISO footage. And my instinct tells me it's not going to look good, but let's apply it anyway and see. B -b 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 Bam! Okay, so I'm fairly surprised about how this looks. So. Let's let's see what they look like all together uh, by taking the center portion of the frame. Okay, so this is interesting. I think the 20,000 ISO looks the best and obviously the 80 second, but it's really interesting to see the shift in color when you increase the ISO that much. The 1600 ISO clip isn't really worth speaking about. We can all see it's noisy. I tried raising the levels to match them, but it was just not worth doing, to be honest. 
So for people who say exposed to the right, when actually they mean let more light hit your sensor. This is for you. Let's increase the light. There we go. These are our settings. And this is what our image looks like with lots more light coming into the room and graded. Lovely and clean and no surprise there. So that was quite interesting for me anyway. I, I mean, I found that really valuable. So I think, I mean, we can conclude that on the whole, should you expose to the right in low light? Well, no, not really, because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I thought the 20,000 ISO version was the best, and it showed the least amount of kind of odd colour shift and um, that kind of thing, and it was, you know, it was actually kind of usable footage, even though, you know, I'd never normally need to go up to 20,000 ISO. So maybe instead of exposed to the right, it should be don't be afraid to bump your eye, your ISO up. I mean, so that you're kind of exposed in the middle. I think that's what I'll, I'll be doing from now on. I think if you're in normal conditions, y you don't have to worry about this. You know, if you're shooting outdoors or something like that, you know, just just expose it normally. I, I really don't think with all this, all that abundant light, you don't have to worry about exposing to the right, you're not going to come across noise, seriously. And yeah, with low light, just bump your ISO. This is this is really kind of a bit of a head, yeah, for me, because I actually came from using, uh, before my Sony, I, I was using a Canon 5D Mark II, and I was really kind of quite quite scared to go over ISO 800. Because after that, it you know the picture degraded so quickly, and um, you know, and it, I, I'd have to use things like noise noise reduction, neat video, that kind of thing to get workable footage above that kind of level. So this, I guess, it, this is testament to how amazing the sensor is on the Sony A7S II, and also, I guess, how far the technology has come. So I hope that was helpful. And I hope I don't get too much hate for doing that. You know, let me know if 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 you've got a kind of a way of working that that works with exposing all the way to the right. Then um, I'd love to hear it. So in the comments, that'd be great. And um, yeah, sub and see you next time. Cheers.